what is up there guys, this is Corbin, and we're getting a lot of questions recently on the live stream and in the comments. What do I think about Destro in BFA? And this got me thinking, well, BFA is not really the best in terms of class design. It got me thinking about previous expansions quite a bit. So in this video, I'm just going to run through every goddamn expansion, my experiences with the Destruction Warlocks, what I think was done really well in those expansions, what kind of things just sucked about the spec in various expansions as we go as well. And at the end of each breakdown, I'm just going to give a little quick score sheet summary. My metrics are fun, power level, and versatility. And I'm going to explain exactly what I mean by those brackets as well at the end of the first section that we cover. So gallivanting right into it. Vanilla, wow! Destruction Warlocks in vanilla. Didn't play them. So yeah, this is going to be a very, very short section indeed. I just didn't play them. I heard that they were very, very simplistic. Um, that they could deal absurd amounts of damage, but they would just get destroyed by things like melees in PvP, and, you know, PvP is what we are all about. By the I should just mention that right now, this is going to be very, very much a video spoken from a avid PvP as a long-time PvP as uh, perspective. But Vanilla WoW, from what I gather, it was a lot of Curse of Elements, a lot of Curse of Shadows, a lot of Shadow Ball spamming, and a lot of being eaten alive by rogues. So... Yeah, I'm not going to really speak much more on that topic until WoW Classic comes out and I can really experience all of that loveliness for myself. And this brings us swiftly on to the Burning Crusade, and this was the first expansion that I actually got my teeth into. I first started playing WoW one week after the Burning Crusade's launch. It took me like six months to get to endgame. Oh man, the noob days, but that's a whole other topic. So the Burning Crusade was the time, the age of the infamous... SL, SL, Warlock, and Affliction wasn't doing too bad either, but, you know what, neither was Destro. The main difference was, is that you could play Affliction, you could play SL, SL in uh, TBC and do just fine, do great, even, both very, very strong specs, but if you wanted to set yourself apart, you played Destruction Warlock. Why? Because it was like playing a goddamn piano, and if you fucked up, you just died, man. Um... TBC was still a time at which, you know, Destro was a very, very fragile class and, you know, specialization to play. If you messed up your CC chains, the infamous Destro chain, as it was called back then, the Shadow Furies and, and the Blanket Spell Locks and the, mol uh, sorry, the Death Coils back then, actually. Um, and if you messed up that CC chain once and your Hellstone was on cooldown, it's like, man, you were just gone, you know? But to offset this fragility, like I say, Destro did have amazing CC um, back in the day for the Burning Crusade, at least compared to the other classes of the time, with its only rival really being Mage and maybe Rogue. Um, and it also had incredible burst damage potential. I mean, we're talking like a fully geared Destruction Warlock could literally immolate, incinerate, conflagrate, and if like two of those things crit, you've basically just killed a low geared enemy. You know, or obviously it was a very, very different story versus resilience. Um, back in those days against an, like a high geared enemy, but man, Destro could stomp with just ridiculous damage numbers back in the Burning Crusade, and yeah, it was a lot of fun when things went right. I think a nice TLDR way of putting it is that Destro was very, very fragile, high damage, there was really no margin for error. If you screwed up, you just died horribly Dark Souls style. Now for my super not subjective rating brackets, I've put the fun level at 9 out of 10. I think it was just an extremely fun time to be playing Warlock. Maybe a little bit rose-tinted, you know, the way that I'm looking back at this, it was the first expansion, the first time I'd ever stepped foot into Azeroth myself. So, yeah, maybe nostalgia just playing into that a bit, but screw it. 9 out of 10. At power level, I put them as a 6. There's no doubt that, you know, both the Affliction and the SL, SL Warlock specs uh, we're just superior to Destro back in the day. I'm not so sure about PvE, again, this is mostly from a PvP point of view. We were just kind of too fragile, right? And that leads on to the final bracket by which I'm rating these, um, and that is versatility. How do I define versatility? The amount of areas within the game, again, just PvP areas of the game, which that class and spec can flourish. So in the main crusade, we're pretty much talking duels, um, battlegrounds, well PvP, 2v2, 3v3, and 5v5 arenas. And I've put Destro in TBC at a 5 out of 10. Probably should even put it at a 4 out of 10. Actually, you know what, Sophie, when you're editing this, 4 out of 10, goddammit. Destro was not that 
versatile. It was just too squishy for most of the arena brackets. It did see some success in 2v2s. So I have went ahead and set TBC Destro to a mere 4 out of 10. And that's purely because they were just so goddamn fragile. You know, 2v2s, 3v3s, and 5v5s, just arena in general, was a huge part of the game back in those days. Um, it was the same in Wrath and, you know, some of the future expansions as well, where RBGs just weren't really a thing. So it was kind of go big in arena or go home, and that meant that a lot of destruction warlocks just had to go home. You're just too fragile for that kind of thing. But in the likes of Battlegrounds and, and duels and well PvP, the amount of CC and quickfire burst damage that Destra had access to made them one of the most exhilarating and powerful, um, yeah, well PvP and kind of small scale casual PvP uh, classes in the game. Moving swiftly on to Wrath of the Lich King. Destruction basically got Soul Link. Um, super, super powerful talent. Obviously, it was exploited greatly by the SL, SL Warlocks in the previous expansion back in the Burning Crusade. But now Destro had enough talent points to branch, off, uh, branch out enough, rather, into demonology to pick up the Soul Link talent. And after picking up Soul Link, just referring to my notes real quick, we got a bunch of other cool new toys to play with. Chaos Bolt 1.0, um, which was the quick cast time Chaos Bolt piece through all absorption effects. Um, just amazing fun to use. Uh, Shadow Flame, also extremely good, kind of like the demonic cone of cold. And did we also get demonic circle? We did. And that was a huge, huge fix to, you know, Destro's mobility issues. So, there's not too much more to say about Wrath. It was just a great time for Destro overall. Like I say, it was like TBC on steroids. You know, the fragility and the um, low survivability problems were fixed. And, yeah, we got all, also got a fix for the next biggest problem for Destro, which was mobility through Demonic Circle. So, it was just an amazing time, right? Destro got both faster and tankier in one fell swoop. So, for the fun rating for Wrath, I've set them as a 9. Unchanged from the Bend Crusade. And that's because I think, at least, this is just my opinion. Don't kill me, alright? Calm down. Um, I think that as a class gets more survivable, it's like, yeah, you can tank through more damage, but you lose some of that feeling of danger, like you could die at any moment if you make one fuck up, you know? So, I think that a bit of the fun is actually lost the more survivable a class gets. Maybe I'm just an idiot. I don't know, feel free to disagree. But I think that some of that um, fun element that was lost by gaining more survivability was offset by gaining the, uh, yeah, the new, the new tools, the new toys to fill our toy box, you know, the demonic circle and the shadow flame and all of that juicy stuff. So, 9 out of 10 for fun. I think the power level of Destro was boosted significantly. I'm gonna bump it up from a 6 out of 10 to probably a 9 out of 10. Is it the most viable Destro has ever been in competitive PvP? That's really subject to debate with Mr. Pandaria being the obvious rival, but we'll get to that when we get to it. And the versatility of the class and spec, meaning, again, the amount of areas within the game that you could dabble in and be successful, I think quite comfortably has jumped up from a 5 out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. Um, Destruction Walks were amazing in duels, they were super, super powerful in well PvP. They dominated basically every bracket of Arena. So did Affliction, Affliction was really good as well, and even Demonology had its time in the sun uh, with Metamorphosis in Wrath, so it was just an amazing expansion for Warlocks overall, and, well, just, uh, just one of the winners among the many expansions of WoW, let's just call it that. Next up, we have Cataclysm. And this is where things started to go a little bit wiggly, a little bit strange. Activision teamed up with Blizzard. Didn't find out about that until like a year or so after the expansion. So one thing that I noticed in Cataclysm that I think not a lot of people noticed, or at least nobody seemed to be talking about, was that for the first expansion in WoW's history, the health pools were increased far more than the damage was increased in terms of uh, ratio, you know, rather than the damage and the health being kind of doubled from the previous expansions, the health pools from Wrath to Kata basically quadrupled. People went from having like 30k health to like 135k health and crazy numbers like that in Cataclysm. Uh, whereas the damage barely doubled from Wrath to Kata, at least um, for Destruction Warlocks. Dear God. The result of this change, of this kind of uh, strange skewed ratio of the damage increasing but the health really increasing, meant that Destruction Warlocks burst just really didn't keep up. Um, 
it, it was just nowhere near as deadly as it was in those previous expansions. But that's not to say that Destro didn't get some new toys to play with. I personally think that people often forget just how fun Cataclysm Destro was to play, even if it was a little bit on the weak side. A lot on the weak side, actually, despite an expansion's worth of forum posts bitching about it. But whatever, man, it's ancient history at this point, right? So Destruction Warlocks got access to the instant soul fire through Soulburn Soulfire. We also got access to the first version of Havoc, which essentially copied like 15% of the damage that you deal onto um, like an alternate target. And we also got Felflame. Cataclysm was the expansion in which we got ourselves Felflame. So how bad could it be, really? In terms of fun, 10 out of 10. I don't give a damn. Disagree with me if you so choose. I think this expansion in terms of class design for Warlock, barring the actual damage numbers which were just ridiculously low uh, compared to basically everybody else, I believe in PvE as well as PvP, so it was really, really strange. It, it was just an incredible time to play Warlock, you know, we had so many tools, the Shadow Flames, the mobility, we had instant casts, we had everything but damage. <laughs> it, it was just really, really fun to play. And it was for this reason that I actually stuck it out through Cataclysm and had so much fun and played the game so much, even though I really didn't accomplish much, you know, I just kind of ran around doing world PvP and, and playing Battlegrounds, and beyond that, not a whole lot happened in terms of real progress. The power level in Cataclysm, it dropped big time from Wrath. I'm gonna mark it as like a 4 out of 10, probably a 3 out of 10 if I'm being realistic, but we were just weak as shit. Uh, we, we really couldn't do anything, we weren't competitive in arenas at all. I managed to scrape the 2.2k RBG achievement um, in like the first few months after RBGs were released before it became really meta-saturated and there were just affy looks and um, you know what I'm saying, PvE geared balanced druids running around all over the place. Managed to sneak in 2.2k in RBGs but other than that, I personally you know, found no real success in many areas of the game. And I'm not sure many other people did either, really. On the flip side, Affliction Warlocks are having an amazing time, which is why I leveled like 7 Warlocks during that expansion, and just made a bunch of Affliction ults. It was great. So yeah, power level, 4 out of 10. Versatility, I put it as a 6 out of 10. Why did I do that? It's probably closer to like a 5 out of 10, but either way, kind of below average, right? I don't think it was really any scenario in which you'd rather take a Destruction Warlock rather than just an Affy Lock um, in every aspect of the game. Now this brings us to Mists of Pandaria, the one that a lot of you old school Destro Lock players have been waiting for, right? We got our damage back, we got our mojo back, Bane of Havoc stopped being this kind of tickle damage duplicator into just a straight up spell duplicator so we could lob out multiple mortal coils followed by multiple chaos bolts and life was good. There was even a stint during Mists of Pandaria in which the talent killed Jaden's cunning granted just cast while moving just perpetually, you know, without any cooldown, without any activation requirements. Um, it wasn't just cast while moving incinerate, kind of like Fire Major Scorch. No, no, no. It was cast while moving everything. And oh my goodness, dude. That was a fun, if slightly unfair time. Some of you will also remember that Blood Fear was introduced, which was literally like a five or eight second cooldown or something. Instant cast fear. Yeah, that was, that was patched fairly quickly. Um, so they got rid of Blood Fear, Blood Horror was introduced, which, yeah, like, horrored a melee target who struck you in melee combat. Um, good little extra defensive cooldown, but that's kind of where the good news stopped, in my opinion, in Miss Pandaria. Don't get me wrong, it was an incredible expansion, it was one of the... Christ, it was probably the time at which Destruction Warlocks were the most powerful as a class in spec. They were a force to be reckoned with in so many walks of the game, it was incredible. But Ember Tap was introduced and Dark Bargain and Sacrificial Pact were goddamn introduced. And what else was? Dark Regeneration was ultra, uh, also introduced, as was Unending Resolve. All of these defensive cooldowns were thrown at um, the Warlock spellbook. It might also be poignant to note that this was the expansion in which new talent trees were also introduced, and Shadow Flame was removed inexplicably from the game. Why, why, why? Thrice or quadrice, why? God damn it, what an ability I miss it so much. Anyways, in terms of fun in Miss Pandaria, I'm actually gonna rate it like a 7.5 out of 10. Now, I know that a lot of people are gonna disagree with this. Oh, but Corp Destro was so powerful, you could you could global people, 
Um, we still had a lot of like the CC tools and stuff like that, but it's like I said earlier, I feel like the more survivability you throw at a class and the tankier you make it in PvP, the less risk you feel like you are taking, right? It's not like in the days of TBC where if you fuck up one Shadow Fury or you get kicked on your fear, you're just dead. Maybe that's a little bit too far, don't get me wrong, right? It was extreme times back then, we were super super fragile in the Bene Crusade. Um, but in Pandaria, we really saw the first big influx of this tanky class fantasy being um, thrust upon the class in the spec. And while it made us essentially a tank heavy DPS kind of hybrid and we were super super powerful, suddenly PvP didn't feel quite as intense to me. And it's just my goddamn opinion, I'll totally get it if you were to rate Mr. Pandaria Destro as a fucking 15 out of 10, you know, but for me, 7.5 out of 10. I think it goes without saying that the power level of Destruction Warlocks overall, straight up uh, 10 out of 10. I mean, we saw, I, I believe it was multiple Destruction Warlocks competing, you know, and trying to qualify for the for the BlizzCon finals that year in the threes tournaments. Um, multiple Destro Locks made it to the threes tournaments. It was just a crazy, crazy time. And obviously 10 out of 10 in versatility as well. Destruction Warlocks were playable in basically every aspect of the game, every bracket of arena, raider battlegrounds, duels, you name it, destruction orcs were ripping shit up in, in, in that walk of the game. And then we have Wars of Shitnor, dude. Oh my god, man. I don't even, like, I don't know how long I should spend on this, because I think the longer I spend on this goddamn expansion, the more fucking pissed I'm gonna get, and I don't want it to become a negative video, like, he's still raging about Ward six years later, or... God, how long has it been? I don't know, it hasn't been six years, but you get the point, right? I'm still upset about this expansion. Partially because I got into the alpha testing, and within like 20 minutes of just killing some mobs and checking over the talent trees and that fucking Wall of the Draenor alpha, I was already pissed. I wrote multiple forum threads, okay? I made a ton of videos about how garbage I knew it was going to be, and obviously, Obviously, um, nothing was changed. Now, I don't know, maybe I'm... I don't want to sound like I was overestimating my power. Don't get me wrong, it was desperation plays. I didn't think that me talking about these subjects was actually going to affect any change. I always got the sense that Blizzard just do whatever the fuck they want to do and they don't really care so much about um, community feedback. Well, that might have to change sometime soon with the way things are going, but that's neither here nor there. Look at me, man, I'm getting all goddamn red in the cheeks, man. Because I'm getting all wound up about this shit. Anyway... Um, so Chad Remains was introduced in Wall of Tadrano. And in my opinion, it's never quite been removed, to be honest. Chad Remains uh, was essentially a talent that murdered your Conflagrate and Incinerate's damage in exchange for absurd Burning Ember gains. What did this mean? Well, it essentially meant that the only two meaningful buttons that you would ever push on the class were Ember Tap, to heal yourself, and Chaos Bolts, to deal damage and stop your opponent from living. And this just sucked. This just sucked. Like, I didn't realize how important it was to have um, filler abilities that kind of fin uh, felt meaningful. You know, the likes of Conflag and Incinerate. They might seem inconsequential, but when they're just doing tickle damage, and when you know for a fact that your melee opponent is just waiting for you to try to cast a Curse Bolt, because that's the only way you can actually kill them, and then they inevitably, you know, knock you on the cast, or stun you, or, or kick you, or line of sight you, or whatever, or shadow meld you. Fuck that shit, you know. <laughs> it, it just felt horrible. It felt... it didn't feel good. Of course, Ember Taps made Destruction Warlocks extremely tanky at this point as well, because Chad remained, you could just spam Ember Taps. Um, especially with the glyph, things got ridiculous in terms of tankiness, which, again, I personally really, really don't like. Um, and they also pruned a bunch of abilities, which I've listed out here, including... Fell Flame, gone. Uh, the Backlash Passive, which grants, you know, granted us instant cast incinerates um, after taking a melee hit. That was removed from Destro after being part of the game for a long, long time. Uh, Twilight Ward was also pruned, as was Curse of Elements. So fun, 3 out of 10. I can't give it any more than that. I'm not gonna lie, living forever in PvP, it had its moments. Defending towers in Alderac Valley, solo against like fucking 14 allies 
That was a lot of fun, okay? Especially because we had Demonic Circle and, you know, we still had some instant tools that we could kind of pump out. Um, Infernal, Rain of Fire, those kind of things to interrupt the flag caps back then. And we could just live forever, that was great! That was kind of the only fun part. I mean, slinging out Chaos Bolts and doing big damage is fun for a while, okay? But the novelty, at least for me, wore off pretty quickly. This back became wholly um, one-dimensional, in my estimation. I think at the power level, I'm gonna rate it at a 7.5 out of 10. We were pretty strong, we could find some success in most walks of PvP. It's just a shame that we had such little fun while doing so, which is why largely I just stopped playing Ward after, you know, a few months into the expansion. And versatility, how many different types of, you know, PvP could we really dabble in from arenas, RBGs, all of that good stuff. Um, the issue in Ward with Destro became utility. Uh, we really just didn't have any instance that could, you know, strike out at a target, like single target style, right? We couldn't do things like kill totems. You see a fucking grounding totem on the ground, there's a Destro lock and wall is a Drano, and your conflagrate is on cooldown? You gotta cast an incinerate into that, man. Or you gotta like micro your pet to potentially run halfway across the arena to kill the goddamn grounding totem before you can do a goddamn thing. It just sucked, you know, because there was no fell flame. Um, in a similar vein, we struggled to interrupt, you know, healer drinks and stuff like that. Uh, flag caps in battlegrounds. I think they eventually nerfed Rain of Fire in Ward so that it couldn't interrupt, um, well, flag caps, not surprisingly. So utility-wise, we kind of sucked and that held us back. In Raider Battlegrounds, things like that, we were kind of relegated to the job that would typically be occupied by like an Akin mage or like a Boomkin way back in the day. Where you just stand at the back and you follow the targets that are being called and you deal damage, you know? So, we still had a place, but it wasn't quite as solid as before. Versatility, 6 out of 10. Did I say that already? Maybe I did. Next up, we have Legion. Now, I'm really trying to just be non-biased right now, okay? Let me read off what I've written and see if I can reword it to not make people want to... Reroll. <laughs> so Ember Tap was in fact removed in Legion, and this upset a lot of people, but not me. I was pretty goddamn pleased about it actually. Um, what I wasn't pleased about was Shadow Fury attaining a cast time. It was like Shadow Fury was like one of the last tools that we had for just kind of instant cast, easy mode, CC. Um, and it was just gone. God, I almost forgot actually. Not only was Shadow Fury given a cast time, this is why I make notes, it was also made into a talent, and it shared a tier with Mortal Coil and Demonic Circle. So, yeah, this effectively pruned both Shadow Fury and Demonic Circle, which is such a goddamn shame. Those were such key abilities. Um, yeah, they kind of butchered Shadow Fury with the cast time. Like, we weren't going to pick that anywhere, right? It, it wasn't a big deal to lose it at that point, you know? It already kind of sucked a little bit. But Demonic Circle, really? Really now, man. We've had that thing since like, I'm not even gonna go into it, man. Blood Horror was also pruned and you're gonna notice that this is where abilities just start to kind of drop off, you know. We're losing abilities at this point quicker than we are gaining um, new ones. And in this expansion, uh, during Legion, you essentially had the choice between a Shadow Bolt, Shadow Burn spec rather, and a Chaos Bolt spec. Most people opted with the pretty standard uh, Chaos Bolt spec. I actually played the Shadow Burn spec for most of Legion, uh, especially in arenas. I felt like just being able to do everything, virtually everything anyways, instant cast, unimpeded, constantly cleaving that damage between two targets with Havoc was just extremely, extremely good. It was also extremely rare. We faced a multitude of, you know, enemy warlocks in arenas in threes when we were pushing in Legion. And we didn't face a single other dude who was playing the Shadowburn spec, man, so I was pretty proud of that. Not that the spec was that fun, I just felt like it was um, more effective. One of the better additions during Legion was, of course, the Destro Lock Artifact Weapon trait, the Dimensional Rifts. These were actually really, really flavorsome. You had, like, the little Shadow Bolt Rift that you could open, it would pew-pew people over time. You had the, the real pew-pew Rift, shoot out lots of little bolts um, over a really short period. And then you had, like, the Chaos Rift, you know? Uh, the big daddy of the rifts, and those were really, really fun to use. They were quick to get off, um, they went OP in any way, but they were really, really nice as filler spells 
or just to pump out, you know, all three of them, along with, like, you know, Kess of Fragility or something while you were bursting. The rifts were a lot of fun, but in my view, they didn't quite fill the void left behind by Shadow Fury and by, um, Demonic Circle. So, unfortunately, I'm gonna have to rate Legion Destro as maybe a 5 out of 10 in terms of fun. Um, I think that has seen better days, but I really like the fact that we didn't have Ember Tap anymore. It was, t it was high time to cut that shit out in my view. Power level of Legion Destro, pretty standard, not the best spec in the game, not really that bad either, 7.5 out of 10. And versatility, I'm gonna put them at a 7 out of 10. We were kind of all rounders in Legion, we weren't so bad, we weren't so good either, we weren't exactly boring to play, we weren't much fun either. But then again, I actually quit in Legion. How fun could we have been, really? And this brings us to BFA Destro. Oh yes, BFA Destro. Let me just read the first paragraph of my notes real quick. Shadow Fury's cooldown increased to one minute. Dimensional rifts were removed with artifacts, despite hope they would be retained in our spellbook. Yeah, so that's something that Blizzard were talking about with artifacts, you know? And it was a big, big hope that I had going into... Um, BFA when I had the new expansion was coming out and stuff and I was kind of keeping tabs on the game from afar. Blizzard were talking about, oh don't worry, a lot of the cool and really interesting artifact traits are going to be implemented into your spellbook, some of them as passives, some of them as, you know, active abilities, blah 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 blah. Did any of them get transferred? I just don't know. I don't know. I haven't really checked out the other classes. But I do know that Dimensional Rifts did certainly not get transferred, which is a goddamn shame, because it was one of the best things, you know, to, to be implemented into the spec throughout Legion. Continue from my notes, because I'm getting a bit of brain lag right now, to be honest. Shadowban returned as a talent in a similar vein to how it operated back in TBC as a kind of instant blast of damage. However, this damage is indeed far too low to compete with the other, uh, other talents on the tier, Reverse Entropy, and internal combustion. So it's kind of inconsequential to, you know, re-add that to the game, in my view. I was also unpleasantly surprised when I returned to the game, because I didn't look up too much, right? I kind of wanted to shield myself from too much news about BFA. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna start playing the game, you know, give it a few weeks, see how I feel before I go back to making any kind of content on YouTube, you know, if and when. Um, it was like an experimental phase. Jump back into the game, and suddenly Dark Soul Instability had a global cooldown. I was like, what the f- is this some kind of a bug? No, I had no idea about the whole global cooldown fiasco and just how horrible, man, that shit would feel. Especially when, you know, you're playing Destruction Warlock and it feels like this whole global cooldown change fiasco, it just adds to the clunkiness of the spec. And I actually feel like right now in the game, Destruction Warlocks are probably the clunkiest I can't say this with any certainty, but I feel like they're probably one of the clunkiest specs uh, in the game that has hit, that has just ever been in the game for like the past 10 years. And another thing that really, really bugs me about BFA, yeah, like a lot of things have been pruned, blah, 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 stuff like that, but the, the damage is still wrong, man. It's still wrong. Chad remains, okay. Was supposed to have only been a talent for like one expansion back in Draenor, yeah? No incinerate damage, no conflagrate damage, but insane soul shard or ember generation or whatever. That's basically still in the game. Chad remains still exists as far as I can see it. We might not be able to actually see Chad remains in our spellbook anymore or on our talent trees, but it very, very much feels like our incinerates still basically do nothing. Our conflagrates do very, very little. And all of our damage still hinges on uh, the Chaos Bolts, you know? It's just like Wall of Zedrano. So cutting to the chase, BFA Destruction Warlocks, I'm gonna have to put them at like a 2 out of 10. Um, this might seem a little bit savage, might seem like I'm just being salty about the current expansion. I'm not, I'm just barely playing Endgame right now, you know, I log in at my Warlock every now and then, but I feel so uncompelled by the playstyle of of Warlock right now. And I think it's been a steady slope for a while and it's really culminated to this. I think that it's just very, very simplistic. I feel like there's no sense of exhilaration when you're when you're dueling somebody or when you're trying to take on, you know, like pull off like a 2v1 or something. It's just you pop all of your defensive cooldowns and unending resolve so that you have the kind of aura mastery effect and you can't be interrupted. You pop all of your shit, right? And as soon as both of your conflagrates are on cooldown and they are like root DR and you can't really CC them anymore, it's just a matter of can I win this damage race by just spamming Chaos Bolt at this point in time? 
And that's really as deep as the spec goes. And I really, really don't like that, man. I really don't like that. I feel like there's such little outplay potential um, with the spec as it stands today. But I don't want to wall on the negativity for too long. 2 out of 10 in terms of fun. Um, power level, I think we're actually fine. We're fine. The Chaos Bolts are powerful enough that, yeah, we can have a big, big impact in things like Battlegrounds. I've seen some crazy clips of people in Arena just globaling dudes as Destro, and you know what, man, that's great. 7 out of 10 men for the power level. And versatility? Yeah, uh, I, I don't know. I just don't know. I haven't played, I haven't really played any Arena, this expansion, I haven't really played any Arena Battlegrounds. I kind of got the basics of the gear, you know, I did some world PvP, and then I just switched leveling Iron Man characters, pretty much. I was like, man, you know, screw this. It's I, I don't feel like it's really worth the effort to sink everything into just for this expansion, so... Sadly, I'm not gonna do it. There it is. Thanks for watching, guys. Do please leave your thoughts and feelings in your, you know, Destruction Warlock rankings, maybe what's your favorite expansion, what was your least favorite expansion for Destro, where do you disagree with me? You know, let me know down below, man. It's interesting to read all of this stuff, especially because I know I have a very kind of narrow sight over the game. All I've really done is spam PvP for like 11 years in WoW, you know what I'm saying? So... <laughs> I think that some of you guys who've maybe dabbled a lot more in uh, Raider Battlegrounds will have a different perspective to me. Um, any of y'all who've played in PvE will definitely have a different perspective to me, so it's going to be really interesting to read through. But for now, I am going to leave this video here before I ramble on forever, and Sophie rages at me because she's going to be editing this video. Thank you very much, Sophie. Thanks for watching, guys. Do enjoy the rest of your day. Look forward to checking out your comments down below. I'm going to catch all of you guys. Just tap it later.